Okay, welcome back to Case Closed Anime Review Episode 175. Wow, this is something. I get this series up this particular number. I think the other series is close to the same number as this one. I think it's Black Clover. Yes. Um, as you can probably tell, this is the third episode review I've done today for Case Closed. Well, that's because I was behind in the series, and now with this one, I'm officially caught up. Yep. This one is basically another anime original episode called The Targeted Chick Chicken Sexter. You're probably thinking to yourself, okay, what the heck is a chicken sexter? Apparently, these people de de determine what gender these chickens are, if they're male or female. And so, this champion sexter is, excuse me, being targeted by this mysterious person. And one thing I like to with this episode is a good build on who it is. Basically, it's plenty of clues everywhere, which is so obvious. At least I appreciate the fact that the pacing is really good here. It's not obvious, and it's not it's not too obvious, and it's not like rushed where it's like, oh, it's this person. There is a red herring in this episode, but not the person behind it. So apparently, I threw a ball at them, nearly trying to burn the hand. Basically, all targeting his hands. And during a during a lecture he was giving, he nearly got detergent spilled on him. This would necessarily wouldn't kill him per se; it would in fact damage his skin. And good thing Mori was there to protect him from it. Yep. So they do some investigating of who the heck would be responsible for this. They talk to accountant who they suspect she she says, "Oh yeah, I want to be a chicken sexer." And they investigate the president a couple times. At one point. He's like very nervous and he's hiding something. Yeah, it was he was obviously hiding something, but was he responsible for what happened to the champion sexer? No. They do mention that there was his there was his, his predecessor, I mean this champion sexer. He was champion for about several years, for four years in a row, and then he lost the title to the current person. And they don't really go into it a little bit later in the episode when Kona goes to the footage and he actually won. His accuracy now in the case of the guy who actually won it went by 100, 100 accuracy. The other one's 83. So and Conan kind of basically fast forwards a little bit through which basically would get, get a little boring if you're not familiar with it. Because Conan and Moore and Ran have this expression of like what are you talking? We have no like they're all bragging awesome. Bless you! They're all bragging how awesome chicken sex thing is. And they're like, we're just here for a job. Why are you telling... Like, they're basically not interesting to stuff at all. I mean, in the case of Mori, this... Uh, Call Girl, this is not interesting for him at all. Not even Ran, who doesn't do anything this whole episode. No, seriously. She does practically nothing. I'm like, what's the point of having her in the episode if you're not having her do anything? Not doing or karate that she's known for doing or breaking stuff? Nope, just have her stand around and do absolutely freaking nothing. Just follow her around, her, her, basically her father and her boyfriend in the form of a child the whole episode. Yes, though she does not know what's her boyfriend. She still doesn't know at this point. 25 years later, she doesn't freaking know. Actually, well, next year mark like 30 years since the manga is publishing. And like two years after that, it will be like 30 years. Uh, there's several points you got close, but they always have written it off. Mostly. Mm -hmm. So, Conan actually does investigating. And of course, more does a little bit here and there. Mostly all, it's all Conan all investigating. We, we get a brief uh, mention of Tagagi in the episode. He basically appears over the phone. Does not make a physical appearance, which uh, that's kind of weird. Why would you not bring him in if you have him on the phone? So, they had him do some digging here, which is nice. The fact they may, they actually hear his voice. But does make a physical appearance in the episode. Nope. And then at one point in the episode, like, they kind of figure out, according to how figures out who it is, it's actually the accountant. The one who actually, they figure out later on, she's actually the... Apparently what happened, though, is that the match between the current person, Nevis, and the previous person, it was fixed. And 
they found evidence later on and there was stuff later on that comes to it. So it turns out the account that's actually the previous the previous champion's daughter, which she was put in orphanage and her name she was adopted by the Kawa family. And that happened seven years ago. And apparently the guy bragging about the fact the match was unfair, they eventually got a negative rotation public eye and he retired. And then six months after the thing, he committed suicide. Yeah, it's kind of implied he hung himself. Due to the fact couldn't stand the fact that he didn't get justice for what happened. So then eventually the current champion gets kidnapped by the accountant. And she tries to break his wrist with a clamp. Yes. It's really close. And thanks to Maury and of course Conan talking her down. And then she's arrested and it's revealed about their dirty deeds. Where the fact the president of the company, he's actually arrested for embezzlement and tax evasion. So the dark stuff that's kept hidden was basically a good crime. It's basically nothing to do with what's going with harassing his own champion. Oh yeah, and the fact he was a former judge. Excuse me. And that basically draws us very suspicious. Yeah, but in the end, basically the... The guy who they was hired to protect should be a bad guy. And he got and I think well they mentioned he got the championship shift from a guy's license, uh, his champ his chicken sexter license revoked because of the fixing. As for crimes wise, he wasn't really necessarily arrested for anything per se. His boss was for like I said, tax evasion and embezzlement. Yeah, and by the way, he basically spends the whole time sitting in his office. I'm like, does he have work to do? Doesn't he have, like, paperwork to file or at least some kind of work? I mean, he's a president of a company. And it seems like he looks so bored. Like, he doesn't have a computer to keep himself busy. Yeah, like, look at his desk. Apparently, he doesn't have a computer there, which is quite odd. Because any president of a company would love to have a computer on their desk. Like, either it's, like, a laptop, which you would use nowadays, or an old-fashioned desktop computer. You know, with the tower and the monitor and the keyboard. I prefer the laptop stuff. That's me. Yep. But in the case of this episode, really good. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Two episodes in a row that they've done a really good job with. Uh, the only problem with this episode is Rand does nothing. No, seriously. She does practically nothing. The whole episode. Maury does some stuff. I at least got praise. The fact to give him something to do. After the fact he was mentioned last episode, but didn't physically appear. Here he is appearing, and he finally does something. Well, you know what he does in the series. Ran. Typical Ran. She's brought there, and she does nothing. We have this hilarious post credit scene where they're going to do, instead of, the next sex thing they're going to do is going to be trying guessing the gender of a guinea pig. And Conan Ran like, nope, not interested. And they walk away, and of course, Mauricio all by himself. Yep, but that's the episode. I mean, with the exception of the fact Ran got nothing. Yeah, this was definitely a good episode. Okay, so that's a sick of you. Next up is a comic corner, and it's on the Chainsaw Man next. Okay, next video. Bye.